Okay, we're going to try this one more time. I have been having recording issues all day today. So uh, last try, I hope. What we're going to do in this one is look at some mouse inputs. So that um, here I am in our scene view, and I can click and drag and position things. But if I were to go to my game tab and hit play, um, I can't click and move these things around, um, which is because we can only do them in the editor. But if you wanted a game um, where you could click and drag stuff around, uh, that's certainly possible, and that's what we're going to do today. So that's part one. Part two is um, if we wanted to do a certain gesture only on a specific object. So for example, if this star had a swipe right functionality um, associated with it, maybe this apple had a swipe up. Um, that way, if you're swiping up on a star, you know, it wouldn't take it. Uh, it would only take it if you're swiping right, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to do in this one. So in order to do any of these things, we need to do um, box colliders, or some kind of 2D collider on all of these elements. Otherwise, none of this stuff is going to work. So for my star and for my apple, which are the two things I want to interact with, um, I'm going to add a physics 2D box collider to both of them. You can use any, any collider, it doesn't matter. Um, but that's going to get us started. Um, and then I'm going to create a new C Sharp script, player controller. And I'll put that script on each of these things. All right. Um, and then I'm going to edit um, what we're doing here. Um, and we're going to use a new function that I haven't used in any of these before, I don't think. On mouse down. OK, so this is going to tell us what this is. Sometimes in the past, um, we've done an update. We said if input get mouse button down. Um, which is different than on mouse down as its own standalone function. So this thing is going to say on mouse down means are you clicking on this particular object? Whereas when we stuck in an update before, it's like a global thing. Um, what's happening with the status of the mouse button? This says you are clicking on me. Um, so I'll just say debug dot log click. All right, let's just see how this thing works. And then if we run, we will see down here in our console, nothing here. I'm clicking all over. Um, as soon as I click on the star, it starts printing stuff out down here. And as soon as I click on the apple, we get more stuff down here because that script is attached to both of them. So I'm clicking out here, nothing. Here we get it moving. Here we get it moving. So um, because these things have box colliders and they have a script attached to it, um, we can trigger this. So what we want to be able to do is click and drag things around. So I'm going to make one variable up here, bool clicked. equals false. Um, when we get a mouse button down, we'll say clicked equals true. And then we need to clear it. When we do a mouse button up, when we release, we will say clicked equals false. So basically, these are while the mouse button is being held down after it's touched this the object that the script is attached to, we're going to set this flag to true. It's going to stay true until we release. Um, and while it's true, we want to be able to update the position of the object. So um, first we need to get the position, and we want to update it to wherever the mouse is, because we're going to click and drag it. So the first thing we need to do is get the position of the, mo of the mouse. Vector 3 position equals camera. And I'll, I'll type this out and then explain it. Main dot main. Screen point to world point input dot mouse position. Okay, um, and then we'll say something like transform dot position equals position. So this line, this vector three position equals camera dot main screen to world point of input dot mouse position. We have all kinds of different coordinate systems happening within Unity. Um, all of our transforms and our objects and stuff are in world uh, coordinate system, and the input dot mouse position is basically within the resolution of the game screen. And so there are two different completely different systems. And so with this business here, we're going to convert where our mouse pointer is or where we touched on a touch screen um, into our world coordinate system so that we can update the position of our object to match where we just touched. Um, there's one more thing that we got to update here. Position dot Z equals tr uh, transform dot position dot Z. So we have our camera. Even though this is a 2D game, we still have three dimensions as far as uh, the depth of where the camera sits. And so um, if we were to forget this line here, updating the Z uh, parameter, 
um, then our position that we move our sprite to would move to the Z position of the camera, not the Z position that we assigned it inside the Unity editor. Um, and in this case, our camera is at negative 10, and all the other sprites are at zero. So um, if we didn't have this line here, um, when we update the position of the object, it would jump back behind the camera, and you wouldn't be able to see it, essentially, what's happening. Um, but if we have this, and I'm going to add one more thing here, if clicked, because we only want to be moving um, while we have the button held. So if you want to just move around without the button, um, then you don't need this if statement. So with this, we go back to Unity. Maybe. And hit play. Now when I click on the star, I can drag it around. And then it's going to stay wherever I pick it up. And if I click on the apple, I'll be able to move it over here. And the whole reason all of that magic works is because of these mouse down and mouse up events where we're checking to see, um, is it the object that the script is attached to? And if it is, then while we're clicked, we're going to keep moving it around following the mouse. So that's that. Um, the second thing that I wanted to do was um, handle gestures. Like, for example, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to click on the star and swipe to the right. If we do that, we'll delete the star. Um, and we don't want that functionality on this apple. All right, so I'm going to, in our update loop, I'm going to comment this piece out because it's, it's good code, but it's not going to be useful for what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to make a public rule, and we'll say delete on right swipe equals false. Okay, so that's going to tell us if we want to delete this object when we swipe rice, right. <laughs> Sorry, it's state lunch. <laughs> um, and then uh, this one, uh, we're going to add one more thing, which is there's a whole tutorial on, on gesture uh, detection and stuff like that. Um, so if you want a little bit more details on how we're doing this, you can go check that out. But one thing we got to know is where does our gesture start? So vector three, or vector two, swipe start. Um, and we're going to use this when our swipe finishes. Um, so here's on our mouse down. Uh, we've clicked on our object. We're going to say swipe start equals uh, input dot mouse position. Just where where did we start? Okay, so that's easy. That's a vector too. And then on mouse up, this is where we got to determine if we made the gesture that we were looking for. So in this case, we're going to say if clicked is true, we've already selected our object. If this is true, delete on right swipe, then we need to check if we've actually made a right swipe. So first we check if we clicked, then we check if this parameter is set to true, then we're going to check to see if we actually made a right swipe. And if all three of those conditions are true, then we're going to delete our object. Okay, so we'll say if clicked and delete on right, and I'll put this in parentheses, um, input dot mouse position, this is our current position where we release the mouse, dot x, because we're only looking for horizontal horizontals, minus swipe start, dot x is greater than zero, which means we went to the right. Then we can say destroy game object. All right, so that makes sense. And so yeah, if click to set, delete on, on right is, is set, we've actually moved to the right. Now this thing here, there should be a threshold, um, because even if you just press and release as quickly as possible, these x values probably aren't going to match. Um, so this thing should be bigger, like maybe 0.5 or 0.1 or whatever, depending on how big of a swipe you actually want the user to do. So you'll have to experiment with what is the correct value for what you're doing. But for right now, I'm just going to do zero because um, it's, it's the easiest thing. Um, so now if I save that and I go back to Unity, hit play, and if I click and drag, that doesn't work because we commented that stuff out. If I click and swipe right, nothing happens. Click and swipe right, nothing happens. That's OK. That's how we have it coded. Because if we look at the properties of our objects here, we click on star. Um, now we have this parameter over here called delete on right swipe. And that's not checked, so it shouldn't be following it. I'm going to check that on our star. And we'll leave it unchecked um, for our little apple. And now when we play, if I click on our star and swipe right, it's going to delete it. Because now that thing is set, all three of our conditions exist. And if I click and swipe right on the apple, Nothing's going to happen because this parameter is not set. So that's a quick tutorial on a little bit more advanced uh, touch and mouse inputs. Remember, anything we're doing with the mouse um, with these things are going to work for touches.